Okay, so I saw this tweet recently that said Sour Rollout was insane, like these single choices were perfect. So first off, she had a driver's license. And this was the first song that I heard from her. She did do All I Want, but I didn't hear anything about that. But this was like what she came up with that really put her stamp on the world. It was viral on the internet for days and, you know, weeks and months. And it was just, you know, number one for what, like eight weeks, I believe. And so, you know, she has that accomplishment under her belt. The song was going viral on TikTok because of the bridge. Like this was that moment. And it took her career to a completely different level. And, you know, it just got everyone that much more excited to see what she was going to do next. Not my favorite song by her, to be honest with you. I like other songs by her better, and the song is overplayed. But, you know, I get it. I get it. You know, it was the right move for the first single. Next up, Deja Vu. This one deserved a little bit more appreciation. I think it kind of got lost in the shuffle between Driver's License and Good For You. But I always really like this one. I really like the bridge. It peaked at number eight on Billboard. And I like this as a follow-up a lot because, you know, it was an up-tempo show that she could do something a little bit different. And then, good for you. Yeah, another smash hit. Like, this, I think, might have more streams and driver's license on Spotify. Another great moment. I really like the music video, setting the room on fire, the whole cheerleader thing, the single cover. Yeah, like, the succession of these three singles, I think, was truly perfect and really a great way to, you know, start out the career and make people pay a lot more attention to her. And it just felt like every single she kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is a great way to do a single rollout. And these were all the singles that she actually released for the album overall, so she would end it out with Traitor and Brutal, which I think were good choices for singles. I really would have loved for her to do Jealousy Jealousy as a single, but, you know, I get it. I think that this is a really good roll for the first album, and this is a prime example of actually milking the album, having a bunch of singles, a bunch of music videos, and that just led me to think about great single rollouts in general, and I have a couple to share today. When I talk about milking the album, this is what I'm talking about. Janet Jackson, Rhythm Nation, 1814. This album came out in 1989, and she had hits in 1989, 1990, and 1991. Three separate calendar years, and I think she's, like, the only artist to do that or something like that. Like, she has a great feat. Seven of the singles were top fives. And you see, that is a record that has never happened again. And this is when you had to physically go to the store and actually buy the single and listen to it on the radio and just a different era so i'm gonna show you the singles so i mean look at this run miss you much pop hit love the music video choreography rhythm nation i mean how iconic can you get i mean that song alone whoa one of the best music videos of all time i fear escapade a great pop hit we love it same with all right come back to me is one of my favorite janet jackson songs of all time black cat yeah she wrote this one herself actually like the riff and everything love will never do without you and state of the world i mean this is one of the best single runs of all time and you know that heavy promotion for it and all the music videos and you know the short film that cannot be understated one of the best problems of all time i don't care listen to it if you have not already that new jack spring that production i like her vocals i like the lyrics it's so masterfully done talking about social issues in a really smart way mariah carey daydream one of the best pop albums of all time and also had a really great rollout as well so here's all the singles that were released from daydream fantasy with a lead single it was the first single by a female artist to go number one on the billboard hot 100 chart number one for eight weeks once a day boys to men would go number one for 16 weeks on billboard hot 100 and they held that record on for a pretty long time until Lil Nas X, but you know she'll get it back with all they want for christmas is you open arms i don't think that they really gave it the full treatment that it deserves in terms of releasing it as a single but you know did fair enough always be my baby the hit that you are number one for two weeks one of her most enduring hits and she did direct a music video for this as well as fantasy which a lot of people don't know forever again i didn't really give it the treatment that it deserved i believe that this one and open arms are like european singles more so but you know they should have got more of a push honestly last up earning the stars i don't even want to talk about how dirty they did this song because it's gonna hurt me it really is. You know, it's that good of a song, in my opinion. I love it that much, and it deserves so much more. I didn't even chart. But, you know, I really love the music video for it, and it was a really great roll-up. But, yeah, Daydream was just the album. Three number one singles. Also, would be remiss if I didn't talk about her debut album really quickly. So, let's go over the singles. A Vision of Love, iconic debut single that inspired the likes of Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, Kelly Clarkson, and many more. One of the best debut singles of all time and my personal favorite. Love Takes Time, my favorite song from the album, of course. Someday, great record. I don't want to cry. And these were all number one, by the way, besides there's got to be a way. But that was only a single release in the UK. I think All In Your Mind would have made a great single. I get why they didn't release it, but otherwise, the single rollout is pretty perfect. Obviously, have to talk about Michael Jackson Thriller, the best-selling album of all time, and rightfully so. 
And, I mean, look at the single roll-up. Hit after hit after hit. And something as great as this, basically, you just have to marvel at what he was able to do. Pretty much release the entire album as a single. And, you know, gotta give it its tens, gotta give it its tens. You know, so legendary and just so many classics that people still love to this day. What a masterful rollout. Really great singles and stuff like that. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about milking the era. Like, one thing about Michael Jackson, he was gonna milk the era. And that's on period. So, gotta give it its tens. Last up, a modern example, gonna talk about Dua Lipa Future Nostalgia. So here are all the singles released, and I like all these songs. I think the Levitating remix was not necessary because the original is great. But yeah, a great modern example of Milky the album. Mind you, she released it during the pandemic as well. So all the singles, you know, she really gave the album legs. She really pushed it, promoted it. And yeah, a staple album of the 2020s because of that. You know, for me, album is inconsistent. I more so go to the singles, but you know, a masterful rollout. But those are just a couple rollouts I really like. I'll probably do more of these in the future. Let me know your favorites of these down below in the comments and just favorites in general. But this is a fascinating discussion.